We're going to start today with a simple two-part blend, which I have made for you. Now you know that the blends are covered in my first course, and you don't even have to sign up for that course to see them, because it's the free one that's in that course. So uh, if you know how to make a two-part Skinner blend, great. Uh, there's a million websites that will show you. But right here in Curious.com, I've got um, a nice tutorial on it that you're very welcome to watch for free. So here's my two-part Skinner blend. It's regular blue called Ultramarine Blue, and it's by Sculpey Primo. And uh, what I've done is I've taken a whole block of Ultramarine Blue, that's a two ounce block, and a whole block of white, and I made myself plenty of blend. Whether or not I use it in this project is not the point. Uh, you always want to have some blends laying around, and once you've got your clay machine out and you're making them, you know, why not make extra? So you're going to end up with a roll this size. And for a good point of reference for you, I'm using this surface today because it's one and a half inches per square. So this is three inches each of these segments. And that helps us really know what size we're working with all the time without having to uh, stop and look it up or measure. So you can bevel cut your end, or if you don't want to sacrifice any of your color, you can roll it out on the end a little bit. And either one works fine. So I'm going to take my jelly roll, which I've just made. I'm going to finish it up here. Make sure that it's nice and even. And close it up. And I close it up by uh, just blending it gently with my fingertip. So I'm going to take this out to the 3 inch mark. And that way we'll always have that point of reference, okay? I just do that by a little bit of stretching. Uh, this kind of reduction is very simple on something this size and shape. And there's no real technique to it. You never want to push hard though when you're doing this because if you push hard on a cane that has a lot of parts to it and maybe different temperatures of clay in it, uh, you can break it down in the middle. It creates a hole and that's really kind of catastrophic for your cane. It's really hard to come back from that <coughs> and save it. So that's a tip for you. Don't rely too much on rolling it on your work surface, just a little bit like we did today. And we'll do more cane reduction in a minute. So now I have about a three inch roll and it goes from dark to light. And I'm gonna wrap it in a sheet of black. The purpose of something like this is just to establish a line and I've used a uh, number six setting, which is pretty thin. And number six is about as thin as you want to go day to day. I mean, there'll be times when you think you might need it a little bit thinner. But when you're working with anything thinner than a number six, it's really uh, hard to do. It's prone to getting bubbles. It's prone to tearing. So a number six is plenty thin enough for most projects. So I've got my number six sheet, and I'm going to wrap it around this cane. When you bring a cane in after you've wrapped it, you can make yourself a little cutting line just by going ahead and letting this part touch for a second and bring it back out. And it makes a little line that you may not be able to see on camera, but you'll be able to see in real life. And you cut just inside the line that you just made because there's always a little bit of stretching. Now when you're doing this part, it's okay to leave a little bit of space and stretch it together because you really want to make sure you don't have any bubbles in this wrap. And as I said, the thinner wraps are more prone to bubble making than the thicker ones are. You'll always find that to be true. So I'm pinching it shut. And I'm smoothing it out. And I really want to make sure this is a pretty good seam. Because this is going to create one of the major lines in this, in this cane. So, you know, in the last course, I don't know if you have taken that one. But we talked a lot about lines versus fill. And it just seems like such a dry topic. Who cares, you know? But uh, it pretty much makes or breaks your canes. So I want a line around this because I want to have a definite beginning and end to, uh, to this jelly roll. But I don't want the black to take over my design. I don't want it to become a background. So this is kind of a good illustration of the difference between line and background. 
Now we're going to put another wrap on this that's going to be background color and I'm going to use some green. And this is going to be a thicker setting on your clay machine. So I'm using uh, my thin one here and I'm going to go up to a four on this wrap because it's making a little more of a statement and it's a little bit more uh, background than line. So we have our bullseye, uh, black, green, and in your color palette you're just going to be making your blend, put in your line color and black or dark is pretty good for that, and then a uh, color that you're going to want to bring into your design as a form of background. So we're going to take this and reduce it down to about three times its length. So we figure it's going to be about nine inches long when we're through. And what I'm going to do is grab it right in the middle, creating a waist is what they call it, getting an hourglass shape. And I'm going to keep uh, resizing it going outward on both ends. Now it would be wonderful if we could just roll it like that and make it skinny like we used to do with the Play-Doh, but it just doesn't work very well with these. So reducing a round cane takes just a little bit more finesse than you would with, you know, with just a roll of clay, because you're trying to maintain your design that's inside. So it's already getting smaller. You can grab it and pull it. That gives you a lot of mileage because it uh, makes it longer in larger increments than in doing it in the conventional way. So that's looking like about nine good inches. And when I say good inches, uh, this is a good time to trim your cane and make sure you've got a lot of integrity uh, at the ends because we're going to be using up all of this uh, for your design that you're making and uh, this design is really based on a lot of symmetry. See these? Don't throw them away, they're really fun. Okay, just make them a little pile, you could use them later. But anyway, this cane is symmetrical. This cane we want to look a certain way, so we want to make sure that both ends of our cane are as identical as we can make them, and they're, they're fine this time. And we now have exactly nine inches, okay? So I'm going to take this cane and I'm going to hold it at this end because I'm going to mash it down and make it more of an oval shape. But I don't need it any longer, right? So we'll, we'll measure it again before we cut it, but just to save yourself a little bit of uh, time, if you hang on to one end of it when you press down, then it doesn't squeeze outward quite so much. So I've taken a minute to make sure that my um, oval shapes are, are symmetrical, that they look the same. And I don't need it any longer, that's why I'm kind of pushing it. And I'm making sure that it's nice and even. And that took, what, two minutes? It seems like a lot of bother, but it's, actually it's really not. So, I've got my piece here, and I need three pieces of it. And I'm going to go one, two, three. One, two, three. You know, I measure and measure these, but I don't think I ever get them exactly right. But remember, the little cane ends are our friends and they can be really pretty, okay? And I'm going to take these three and I'm going to put them together now. And they're so pretty. I just really like them. Now, if you're super, super picky, you can examine them for hours and figure out exactly which way those spirals are going. But I'm never doing that because it would ruin it for me and it would go insane. So they look good, they look fine. And you see even with measuring how I have that little high spot, you know, who cares. Okay, so now you've got these three like this. But these three aren't going to be used in this shape, they're going to be used in the shape of a square. So what we need to do now is to compress these into a square. Now if you just have at them and just start ripping on them, um, they're going to distort a lot. You won't have such nice little ovals. So this is where you want to kind of relax. You know, you put on your music, have a sip of your beverage, and we start to push down. And as we do that, we're taking this from a rectangle here. You don't always have to have them perfect. So we're pushing down on this. And some people have like big pieces of um, plexiglass, you know, or lucite, whatever. 
and they and they mash down on it with with that. I think that's kind of a good idea. My my piece of lucite is really small because it came in a Sculpey bead kit thing, so it's kind of small for this project. But I use it a lot in smaller canes. But I'm sure if that's what you want to do, you can find a source for a nice thick piece of that kind of plastic. We've got our 12 inches and we're going to cut four pieces three inches each, okay? One, two, three, and four there. Okay, so we'll make our cuts. We're always cutting straight down. We're always holding both sides of the blade. <clears throat> now we're going to put these together in a basket weave configuration. And that sounds like something hard. I don't even know why you know, the word configuration kind of puts, a me puts me off. So we're going to put them together in a basket weave pattern. So it's sideways and long ways. It's really easy. You're just throwing them in. When you put your last piece in, if you want a little bit of insurance about symmetry of your design, this one's going to go sideways. Okay. Just go ahead and pinch this corner just a little bit. You're just sharpening it a little bit so you never have a gap or you never have to try to take it back apart and get it in there tighter. But with this kind of cane, it's pretty easy. Those big old kaleidoscope canes, boy, they can be hard to put together sometimes, you know. Okay. So you already have this pretty basket weave cane. It's one of my favorites. And it's got um, so many uses to it, really. But uh, I'm not content with this. Because I've found that almost any cane that has straight lines is much more interesting when it's mutated in some way. And the way that these are really pretty is when they're changed from the square that it is now to having the square in opposite corners. We're going to change the corners as they are now to the opposite sides of this and it's really going to change its character tremendously. Okay. And that causes the pattern to travel on a diagonal. It just gives it way, way, way more interesting look. So altering the shape of a cane is such a gift because it, it lends a mystery to it that it just doesn't have in its normal shape. And that's especially true with any kind of parallel lines, uh, any kind of ovals, uh, even circles. So give it a try. Um, it elongates them a little bit and kind of just rearranges them a little bit. So let me show you this. So we've already gone to, to this configuration, which I just think looks a lot better than the lined up basket weave. And now we're going to need to make this pretty square and we're going to need to, well, you know what I'm going to say. We're going to need to make it four times its length again. Okay. No, 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 it's okay. It's fun. <laughs> no, really, this is a pretty one, so. So we're going to want to make it four times its length again, and while we're doing that, just kind of at the same time, we're going to get these corners a lot sharpened so that we can put it back together like we just did. So you see the benefit in keeping your corners sharp and your sides flat? Because when we cut this in four pieces and match it up, see, it'll line up and be really pretty, okay? So we've taken this to eight inches and we want four pieces of it for our final cane. One, two, three. We're cutting straight down. Uh, we don't need any angles on that because we want to match up our edges nicely, okay? So take them right as they lay, because that way you won't have to fret about what matches and what doesn't match. And take these two right as they lay. And 
Take your time to match them up, both ends, as best you can. The closer these match, the prettier your cane is going to be. Because this cane is all about symmetry. So you got your two halves, and you have a choice. You can put them together this way, or you can put them together this way. This depends on whether you like those little motifs in the middle that kind of form themselves through the process. I like them. I think they're different. So this is what we've got. And already we've learned a lot, I think, uh, about cane making. And this is a very simple cane when you think about it. It's a jelly roll wrapped in black, wrapped in green. It's compressed into an oblong uh, or capsule or oval shape. Uh, it's reduced enough to um, cut in three pieces and recombine. So we're shaping, we're combining, we're cutting, we're reducing. That's really what we're going to do in any kind of caning. So our next lesson is going to be something to make with it. And what I'd like to do in this course is kind of alternate the hard work, the cane making, uh, all the painstaking parts of this kind of craft, and alternate it with just fun projects that are easy to do and easy to make with your cane. So I'll see you next time, and we're going to use our cane in a project. See you then.